Hello again, welcome back. Uh, in the previous video, I made a subroutine that uh, it's going to let me easily generate a data file that I can open in GNU plot. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and use that subroutine. So um, I'm going to use it inside my program here called plotter. Uh, the first line I'm going to need is this use line. And the module I made was called GNU plot underscore Fortran. So this line just tells Fortran that I'm going to be using that module that I made. And then I need my implicit none statement, just like usual. Uh, be careful to put this after this call to the module, or else it's going to tell you that uh, you haven't specified a type or something for uh, that module. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and declare my variables. First thing I'm going to declare is uh, an n which would normally be the number of points that I have in the array, but it's not quite going to be this in this example. And I'll explain why in a second. Okay. Normally I've been declaring arrays from index 1 to n. Uh, for this example, I'm going to declare it from 0 to n, and that's just going to make something that I'm going to do later a little bit easier. One of the nice things about Fortran is that you can you can make array indis, indices uh, whatever you want them to be. So in this case, uh, the first element in my array x is going to be x0 instead of x1. And it's going to go from x0 to xn. All right, the next two things that I need are starting and an ending point along the x-axis. And I'm just going to go from 0 to 20 in this example. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever. Okay, and then I need some increment along the x-axis, which I'm going to call dx, and I'll calculate that in a second here. And then I need a counter. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make my x-array. I put a comment in saying what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate my dx. And that's going to be the ending point on my x-axis minus the starting point on my x-axis divided by n. Okay, and you can probably see what dx is calculating here just from that expression. Okay, and I mentioned in an earlier video that there was an easier way to make arrays that have evenly spaced points like this. And I'm going to show how to do that now. Okay, and this is called an implied do loop. It's basically just a shorthand way to write a do loop. And the way this is going to work is it's kind of the same thing as writing do i equals 0 to n and then evaluating this expression and filling in these elements in the x-array. So the first thing it's going to do is set i equal to 0 and then it's going to plug 0 in for i here and then it's going to set the zero index of x equal to that expression. Then it's going to go here and set i equal to 1, and then do the same thing, then i equal to 2, and so on until uh, all the indexes of x are filled. Okay, so that's pretty simple. The next thing I'm going to do is make a y array. And this can be whatever function, whatever function you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to try to pick an interesting one. And one of the nice things about Fortran is that you know you can just go ahead and plug in the whole array x here and it'll evaluate each element of x and plug it in for you know the respective element of y. Okay. So uh, now I've made my x and y array. I'm going to go ahead and generate data for the plot. And I'm going to do that using the subroutine that I made in the previous video. And if you recall, that subroutine was called plot2d. I'm going to pass it my arrays x and y. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And that should export, the subroutine should export a data file containing uh, the elements of x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and see if this compiles correctly. and it looks like it did. So uh, I use the compile flag up here 
and I'm going to do that because I'm putting multiple files together here ultimately. And there's a better way to do that when you have, you know, a bunch of files, but I'm just going to compile separately then put them all together here so you can see what's going on. All right, so it made this file plotter here. So the next thing I need to do is make an executable that uses both of these uh, plotter.o and GNU plot fortran.o. And I'm going to output a file called plotter. Okay, and as you can see, it made this file plotter here. So I'm going to go ahead and run that now. And as you can see, it generated this data.dat file. And I'm just going to go ahead and open that real quick and show you what's inside of it. Uh, it made these two columns here. The, the left column is the X array, and the right column is the Y array. And if you remember, I set the X bounds equal or I set the X bounds from 0 to 20. So it's starting with 0 up here. Da 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 da. And it should go all the way to 20. And it does. So looks like it's working correctly. And these are all evenly spaced points. They go up by 0.2. So let me go ahead and quit this here. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and open GNU plot and plot this data. And maybe later I'll make a video showing the uh, how to set the axis properties in GNU plot. But for now, I'm just going to generate a simple file here. And if you use the command plot, uh, then the data file in uh, single quotes, then using 1, 2, it's going to use the first and the second column from this file data.dat. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And it generated this nice plot here. So, uh, as you can see, it's not it's not too difficult to plot things in Fortran, uh, especially if you make a subroutine that plots stuff for you. And I just want to mention one more time that there's some other utilities people have made uh, that kind of connect Fortran to GNU plot, but I like to do it this way because it's it's simple. And I know what's going on, and you know my subroutines only do what I need them to do. So, anyways, uh, maybe in some subsequent videos I will show you how to call GNU plot from uh, a Fortran program so you don't actually have to open it. And again, I'll, uh, maybe go over how to set the X properties and maybe how to generate multiple plots so you can make an animation. But, anyways, uh, until next time, take care.